There are two kinds of pedestrians, the quick and the dead. That's by Thomas Dewar. Now, that might sound like a shocking quote to begin a podcast, but it's deadly serious and necessary. In 2021, there are nearly 7,500 pedestrian deaths in the United States, equivalent to roughly 20 deaths each day. Let me repeat that in 2021. There were nearly 7,500 pedestrian deaths, roughly equivalent to 20 deaths each day. It's a major part of a growing problem which has seen a steadily increasing trend of pedestrian deaths. More and more, both drivers and pedestrians are distracted. It's been well documented that drivers are distracted by their devices, leading to a rise in traffic crashes. Distractions are the number three causes of pedestrian fatalities. Now, the number one cause is speeding. The number two cause is failure to yield. As a pedestrian, we have no control over those two factors. So let's learn what we can do on the roads to stay safe and put these safety practices into action. Taking precautions is a must when walking. Let's face it. You're most likely walking in your neighborhood, and whether it's urban, suburban, or rural, a good deal of the time you'll be walking on or very near a road. Also, you may find yourself walking at night or walking in uncrowded, isolated areas. Fact, nearly 70% of all pedestrian accidents happen at night. So don't become a statistic. Before you head out on your next walk, put these 22 walking safety tips into practice. One of them may save your life. Now let me repeat with this in mind. Remember, there are two kinds of pedestrians, the quick and the dead. And later in this episode, I'll tell you how you can download the first three insights and logbook pages from my walking logbook journal. Let's get started. Caution, the information contained in this podcast may cause you to feel better than you have ever felt in your entire life. Symptoms include a broader smile, happier disposition, brighter outlook on life, and a general feeling of bliss. Proceed with wild abandon. Hello, I'm Frank Gring, the author of the Amazon bestseller, Walking for Health and Fitness, The Easiest Way to Get in Shape and Stay in Shape. I discovered the healing power of walking after a severe back injury put me out of work for four months and literally left me on my back trying to relieve the pain and heal. Through my books, website, YouTube videos, walking programs, and now this podcast, it's my mission to help others achieve a healthy, balanced lifestyle one step at a time through walking. Join me each episode as I discuss the physical and emotional benefits of walking along with information about fitness, mindset, nutrition, wellness, and more. So join me each week as I encourage you to walk on. And the main topic in today's podcast is safety first. As I talked about in the opening, taking precautions is a must when walking. So let's learn these 22 walking safety tips and begin putting them into practice. And number one, Walk facing traffic. If you remember only one lesson from this entire podcast, please let it be this one. If you walk on the side of the road, you must face into oncoming traffic. You need to see what's approaching you in order to avoid serious injury. When you walk facing traffic, drivers can see you and you can see them. As you get out and walk more and more, you will get a general sense of what drivers are going to do. Now, in my experience... 90% of drivers see me and need to slow down and move slightly over the center line to give themselves room to pass me. 9% of drivers are clueless or worse, they're distracted. These drivers are why you must face traffic and take evasive action if necessary. Now, 1% of drivers in my experience are just plain dangerous and you need to avoid them at all costs. I've jumped to my left a few times to avoid getting hit in my life. It's not a fun experience. Thank God I saw and anticipated what was about to happen. The number two tip, be seen. Now, if you remember only two lessons from the safety list, the first one being to walk facing traffic, then you must, must, must wear reflective clothing and use a flashlight or headlamp when you're walking at night. 70% of all pedestrian fatalities happen at night. It all comes down to reaction time and the drivers can't react to what they don't see. Now, wearing a reflective vest, this will save your life. Now think about how many times you've driven at night or been a pedestrian or been a passenger in the car and 
you haven't seen the pedestrian to the very last moment. Now put yourself in the driver's seat. What will make it easier for you to be seen when you're walking? Okay. Next, carry and use a flashlight or better yet, use a headlamp. Headlamps are now very common household items and they're sold at all local hardware stores and big box stores. In the daytime, you should always wear bright clothing so that you can be seen by drivers. Now, many reflective vests are very lightweight. In fact, you can fold them up and put them into your uh, pack, your hip pack, or carry them in a pocket. Same thing with the headlamps. They're very small. So if you start a walk late in the afternoon and you know, you're know you feeling great, you get out there a little longer, now you're heading back home and it's darker, but it's always good to have these items with you. They will keep you safe and drivers will see you. Tip number three, crossing safely at intersections is your responsibility. Don't assume vehicles will stop. Yes, I know that legally when pedestrians are in the crosswalk, cars are supposed to stop. The operative word being supposed to. Let's face it. Like we said earlier, drivers are distracted, obtuse, clueless. They're concerned about getting that parking spot just beyond the crosswalk or any number of reasons why they are just not looking at you. The crosswalk laws do not mean a thing if you are hurled over the top of the hood of the car because you assume you had the right of way and the driver would yield to you. That's the number two cause of traffic fatalities. Be safe, be seen, and be smart. When crossing a street, make eye contact with the driver of the car. Give them a wave. Make sure they see and respond to you. Use the left, right, left rule. Look left, then right, then left again, as this is the side of the road. It will be, uh, the cars will be approaching you. Also, watch for turning vehicles, especially if you're on the corner. If a driver cuts the corner too tight, you may find yourself under a tire. Number four, walk single file on the road when you are with a partner. While walking side by side is a more natural thing to do, On the road, this can only lead to trouble. You are much more exposed to the roadway, and when drivers come around a blind curve, this could give them and you less reaction time to avoid a collision. Number five, be boring. What I mean by this is you should walk in a predictable manner. No sudden swerving into the roadway, no randomly uh, waving your arms, especially if you're talking on the phone. I like to talk with my hands. And listen for tip number 18 from my cautionary tale. Number six, walk defensively. Don't ever challenge a vehicle or assume the driver knows when you have the right of way. Also, err on the side of caution. The very size of a car negates all the rights you have as a pedestrian. Number seven, carry identification and important medical information. On your smartphone, set up the in case of emergency contact information. This is where your phone is locked, but medical personnel can get to that part of your phone. The In case of emergency, it'll just get uh, help to you more quickly. Number eight, don't walk alone at night if possible. Working full time and getting home after the sunset, it's, it's common in the wintertime. If you must walk at night, please take the following precautions, and this will be number nine on our list. Keep in contact. When you are walking alone, let someone know where you'll be walking and when you expect to return. Let that person know when you have returned. This should develop into a habit and could get you valuable help to you if you miss placing that return call. Number 10, be alert. When walking near wooden areas, dense brush, doorways, courtyards, you need to be aware of your surroundings and any possible threats. Number 11, don't wear a lot of jewelry or carry cash. Be boring. Number 12, beware of strangers. It's unfortunate to even have to write this But yeah, that's where we are in this world right now. It's always possible that you will draw unwanted attention of the criminal element. Walk in areas that have other walkers, runners, foot traffic, and cars, believe it or not. Acting alert and aware can convince a bad guy that they should move on. For added peace of mind, carry pepper spray or other protective devices. This is number 13, protection devices. Now, when I walk, I usually carry a small pepper spray clipped to my belt in case of a dog or human gets too aggressive for comfort. Also, walking sticks with a heavy handle can also be a deterrent to the criminal element. Now, a little history of walking sticks can be traced back to ancient times when humans used tree branches and twigs as a tool for support and protection. As time progressed, walking sticks became more sophisticated and decorative. In the Middle Ages, walking sticks were used as symbols of power and status 
by the aristocracy. Before carrying pepper spray, whenever I would go out for a hike in the woods, I would use an old one iron golf club. Now it was the perfect height to act as a walking cane or stick. It helped me balance on tough footing. I would hit rocks for fun and it drew a lot of comments from other hikers. And also I could swing it ferociously if I ever needed to protect myself. Now thank goodness I never had to use it, but maybe I never had to use it because I was carrying it. Safety tip number 14, keep your earbud volume down. Listening to audiobooks or music while walking, it's a wonderful way to utilize your time, but keep the volume at a level when you could also hear your environment. You need to be aware of cars, kids, dogs, bicyclists, other factors in order to walk safely. You'll also thank yourself in years to come that you didn't blow your hearing out while trying to stay in shape. Now, a note on headphones, I love to walk and listen to motivational speakers, audiobooks, and music. I listen to some form of audio about 75% of the time that I'm walking. I like wired earbuds as they work better with my iPhone when I use the dictation function on my phone um, to record my notes and my thoughts. And I like earbuds that have a volume control on them so I can easily regulate the volume without having to get the phone out of my pocket, look down on it, and be distracted. Okay, so leads to number 15, avoid distracted walking. Hang up the phone. Stop talking, stop texting, stop playing games. If you look at your phone, you'll be less likely to anticipate any approaching trouble, whether it's a driver, a tripping hazard, a passing runner, approaching dogs, or more of concern, the potential criminals that view you as a distracted and easy target. Number 16, if you walk your dog, keep the leash short so the dog doesn't dart out unexpectedly into traffic or trip a runner or other walkers. Number 17, be aware of sun glare. Now, in late fall and early early spring, during the morning hours, the sun is low in the horizon, setting up a situation on some roadways where drivers that are facing east are looking directly into the sun. Keep this in mind because during these brief periods of time, drivers can't see more than a few yards in front of their car. And when drivers face sun glare, they, they don't see anything else. It's so tough just to see the roadway ahead, and they can't anticipate pedestrians at the curbside ready to cross the road. Now, recently, I had a situation where the sun glare combined with a wet roadway nearly blinded me from above the sun and from below the glare. It was so bad, I I couldn't see the crossing guard. He was in full neon green reflective gear in the middle of the roadway, directing uh, traffic. So I stopped him and cautioned him about the sun glare because, like I said, I was right on top of him before I saw him. So be, be aware of sun glare. Think about, anticipate what a driver is facing. Number 18, watch and listen for runners. Runners should also follow these rules, which puts them going in the same direction as you that's facing traffic. Listen for footsteps behind you so you are not suddenly startled by a passing runner. Now, this has happened to me a few times, and just recently, I was so startled by a woman runner coming up quickly behind me that my natural reaction was to jump up, like jump sideways defensively with my hands up. I nearly hit her um, just because my arm flared out. So um, it would have been easy for her to just say she was passing on my right, uh, but she didn't, and I got startled, and uh, it could have been a bad situation had I hit her inadvertently. Number 19, watch and listen for bicyclists. Remember that bikes should be riding in the same direction as cars, so they will come up at you, but quietly. They're coming ahead. Okay, so pay attention while crossing streets as once again, bikes will be coming at you from the same direction as cars, Think left, right, left when crossing. And remember, you can hear a car. Bicycles are hard to hear. Number 20, know your walking limits. Overexertion, heat illness, frostbite, dehydration, and other serious health issues could happen if you overdo it. Number 21, program 911 into your cell phone. Also, let someone know your plans, where you're walking, what time you will return, and make it a habit to contact that person upon your return. And number 22, Weather considerations for walking, okay? Walking can be done in just about any weather conditions as long as you are prepared and properly dressed. There is a certain kind of satisfaction when I complete a walk in less than ideal weather conditions, but you must take precautions. When you walk in hot weather, know the heat index, which is the result of the combined effects of the temperature and the humidity of the air. You must carry water with you and know your limitations. When walking in cold weather, Wind and cold together make up the wind chill, so know the air temperature and wind chill index before going out to walk. 
The key when walking in cold weather is to dress as if, as if it's 10 degrees warmer than the wind chill temperature. And when you're walking in the cold, make sure your outer shell, that outer layer of clothing, breaks the wind. Uh, there are many different materials that'll do that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to dressing in layers. It's a video that I did for um, my Walking for Health and Fitness YouTube channel. So are you looking to start walking to get in shape? Are you already a walker, but looking to take your walking experience to the next level? I've recently released my Walking for Health and Fitness Complete Walking Program. Through interviewing many people at different fitness levels, I came across pretty much the same concern, namely how to hold yourself accountable to get out and walk or do any type of exercise when you're not feeling it. Now yes, the motivation is easy when you first get fired up to get into shape and you begin walking because of all the great benefits you get from it. Then after a week or two, you get derailed by a host of excuses not to get off the couch and walk. I'm too tired, I had a rough day at work, it's too cold out, it's too hot, and the list goes on and on. Well, my interviewees told me a number of excuses they allowed to sidetrack them, so I researched and came up with what I call the core four principles of my walking program. Number one, your why. Number two, your goals. Number three, your habits. And number four, most importantly, how to hold yourself accountable. So after I take you through the action steps to define the first three principles, then the accountability aspect will fall into place. You can enroll in the program through the Teachable platform. I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out and enroll risk-free for my 30-day no questions asked money back guarantee. The only thing you have to lose is the excuses and some body weight and some tension and you could lose anxiety and I can keep going on and on about the benefits of this program and of walking. And the walking product of the week, or I should say products, because it's a reflective vest and a headlamp, uh, keeping in the safety theme of this episode. Now, I do a number of walks in the evening after dinner. I like to take long walks of five miles or more uh, around the surrounding areas from my house. Now, one of my best routes starts at my front door. Then I walk through the neighboring development, up another big long hill into the next town. Now, this five mile out and back takes about an hour and a half, and usually it's dusk when I'm getting close to home. Putting on my bright reflective vest and my headlamp lights me up like a billboard on Times Square. Knowing that cars can see me for a hundred of yards gives me peace of mind. I use the vest and headlamp. So, both of them fit neatly in my pack and are so quick and easy to put on and put to good use. I'll leave a link in the description so you can order your protective gear. Be safe be seen. And in this week's walking insight. Now this comes from my walking logbook journal available at amazon.com and the insight is quick mood boosters. If you're struggling to put a positive spin on your day, boost your mood with a few quick fixes here. One, commit a random act of kindness. Two, sing and dance. Three, compliment someone. Number four, be grateful. Number five, talk with friends or loved ones. And if you have any other mood boosters, you can write them down in the Walking Logbook Journal. And now you can download the first three insights of the book and the accompanying log pages. Just go to the web address. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll send you the instant downloads. You'll get my Get Out the Door checklist and my Walking Inspiration newsletter. Knowledge is power, and I want to empower you to your best health and fitness through walking. So it's time to wrap up this episode of Walking for Health and Fitness. And in this episode, we covered safety first. This is the most important consideration when you go out for a walk. You need to stay safe. Now, as I talked about in the opening, taking precautions is a must when you're walking. So let's learn these 22 walking safety tips and put them into practice. And I'll repeat myself. If you take away only two things from this episode, number one, always walk facing traffic. Number two, if you walk at night, wear a reflective vest and carry a flashlight or headlamp. This is Frank from Walking for Health and Fitness. Thanks for listening and walk on. And please give the Walking for Health and Fitness podcast a review. The most helpful place for you to do that is on Apple Podcasts, which you can do even if you aren't using an iPhone. Just log into your iTunes account and leave the show a review. Now, this really helps more people find the show so that they can learn about the benefits of walking and so much more. If you'd like to share the show, you can take a screenshot of this episode you're listening to right now and share it out on your Instagram stories. 
And when you do, make sure you tag me at Walking for Health and Fitness so I can see you're listening. Sharing your stories is going to help more people find this podcast. Also, share on all your social media. I'll leave my social media links in the episode notes. This is Frank Ring from Walking for Health and Fitness. Thanks again and walk on.